Part 10 of the Large Clarkson Single Cylinder Vertical Steam Engine Rebuild. This is cladding the cylinder with mahogany strips. At first I was going to just clad the cylinder in the normal way with a metal plate, or a piece of brass or something just painted, and I thought to myself, hmm, I won't do that, I'll clad it in mahogany strip with some brass bands, it will look nicer. The first thing I have to do is get the cylinder just to a cylinder, so I'm removing all the studs. I need to shorten these anyway because they were originally fitted with lock nuts, so they're a bit over long. Some of these studs came loose very easily, some of them complete with the lock nuts, and some are just sort of finger tight. So the first thing to do is to obviously remove the loose ones, which I'm doing here. It seems to me that whoever made this engine forgot to set the depth stop on the drilling machine, because some of the tapping size holes around the perimeter of the cylinder went through as you can see here, both on the top and the bottom. If the drill goes all the way through the hole round the perimeter, and then subsequently the hole is tapped, there's a bit of a problem. One problem is of course the tap can easily break. The other one is there's no way you can tighten the stud really tight to the bottom of the hole. In this clip I'm removing some tight studs. Now I would normally not use pliers, but they're really not that tight, they're just tight enough to make it so that I can't undo them with my fingers. If the studs are tight, never try pliers, you will just mash up the thread. And if you must use pliers, make sure you grab the stud by the middle part, the part that is not required to be threaded into anything. But disregard that comment, just do not use pliers. If the stud is tight in the hole, you have a couple of options. What you can do is use a pair of lock nuts, and I have plenty of those, and all you do is tighten the lock nuts against each other, and then by using the spanner on the bottom nut, you can simply unscrew the stud. But if the stud appears very tight, do not proceed. If you shear the stud off, that is major grief. The thing to do then is to warm up the casting. Do this carefully, don't put a blow lamp on it at full power. It doesn't need to be that hot, it doesn't need to glow red. All you need to do is to warm it up enough to make the Loctite give way. That's assuming someone has used Loctite in the hole which is often the case. Now we're down to the last stud, and things generally go wrong at the last operation, known as Sod's Law or Murphy's Law, or just a nuisance. But anyway, in this case it's okay, the stud comes away quite cleanly, and it's not very tight at all. So finally, and being very careful with this last part, for the reason I've just tried to mention, I end up with a stud-free cylinder. As I put all the studs in the plastic bag, this now goes in the box of bits, and I can have a detailed look at the cylinder. The main ports do not look bad at all, but I'll just make sure that everything's nice and flat, and I'm doing this by rubbing the cylinder on a piece of 400 wet dry sandpaper, which in turn is on a metal plate which is known to be flat. From an engineering point of view, this is not so good really. You're supposed to use a surface plate. You can use a piece of plate glass, but I possess neither a surface plate or any plate glass. Thankfully, my piece of 400 wet or dry sandpaper on a known flat piece of steel and the drop of oil gives a good finish, as I'm sure you will agree. This next section covers cladding the cylinder with some mahogany strip. Now, normally, if you use very thin mahogany, you don't have to do what you'll see me doing. I'm going to have to sham for the edges. With mahogany this thick, I have to do this because of the curvature of the cylinder. If I was using the thin stuff, it wouldn't show. But if I put these back to back without chamfering, there will be a big gap in between each piece. What I'm currently doing is using a small drum sander in my small drill to radius this piece of mahogany to accurately fit around the exhaust. Remember, when doing a cladding job like this, it's the most important thing on the engine. Not mechanically it isn't, but it's the thing that everyone will look at and go, Oh, look at this engine, doesn't it look nice? Or, my God, look at this engine, that cladding's terrible. Or even, this man should be taken out to the top of a hill and burnt alive in a large wicker man. So, for the reasons I've previously mentioned, if you're doing a job like this, take your time and get it right. What I'm having to do with each of these pieces is firstly to chamfer each end. I do this on the belt sander, and this chamfer allows them to fit around the radius on the inside edge of the flange. These are the few pieces that I cut, ready to work on them on the belt sander to get them to the right shape, and as well as sanding an angle on each end of the mahogany, which you can clearly see here, 
I also have to trim one edge of each of them. That way they all sit together quite nicely. If you keep watching the clip you'll see exactly what I'm doing. I'm sticking them all in place with quite a copious amount of cyanoacrylate adhesive or CA glue or super glue whatever you like to call it. At this point in the proceedings I can see all the keyboard warriors out there with the fingers fervently twitching over the keyboard ready to send me a message telling me how I should be doing it but this is how I've done it for a long time and it works. The cyanoacrylate adhesive does not really stick these to the cylinder because as soon as the cylinder gets hot when you run it in steam the part of the cladding that's in contact with the metal tends to separate slightly and you can remove the cladding in sections and the cladding complete with the paint that's stuck to it takes on the perfect shape of the cylinder so it can be replaced in sections quite easily. Sanding the cylinder with a piece of coarse sandpaper periodically fills up the gaps. This of course is not the finished product, it all needs sanding and I do this outside and look at the weather, it's terrible. This is the weather on the 30th of January 2016 in Dewsbury, West Yorkshire, United Kingdom. It's really grim up north so that's it for now. I'll sand this down when the weather gets better. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.